80% of falls in the home occur in the bathroom. Don't put yourself or a loved one at risk. There's a safe bathing system for everyone's budget. Enjoy a bathing experience that combines safety, comfort, and excellence. If assisted living is not for you, a BCI walk-in tub may well be the answer, giving you the safety and freedom to live independently. A BCI walk-in tub is the most affordable and comfortable walk-in tub in the market today. With our dual drain technology, your tub will drain quickly. And for those that still like the feature of a shower, our two-way bliss gives you both a handheld and overhead shower head. We offer the best financing in the industry with payments as low as $99 per month or no interest, no payments for 18 months with approved credit. For comfort, safety, price, and selection, it's got to be BCI Walk-In Tub. Be one of the first 50 callers and save $1,500. Call 800-354-4377, 800-354-4377 for a free no-obligation in-home consultation. The Turnbike Sports Book Report is brought to you by BorgataSports.com. Your favorite casino is now your favorite sports book. Available anywhere in New Jersey, BorgataSports.com. Sign up at BorgataSports.com using our promo code PIKE. That's P-I-K-E. Make your first wager of $20 or more, and you'll get $100 in free bets. That's $100 in free bets when your first wager on Borgata Sports is $20 or more. Get into the action with BorgataSports.com. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Welcome to the Turnpike Sports Book Report. I'm Doug Weishuttle here with Dave Weishuttle. We're here to give you a whip-around look at the latest news stories that have happened over the past week in the sports betting industry. Starting off this week, we're going to be looking at some of the... Uh, in the number segment, we're going to be looking at an American Gaming Association report on illegal gambling that's causing quite a uh, reaction <laughs> it's in absolutely, the industry. It's absolutely an amazing uh, report, and it's a fascinating study. So I, I will talk more about it in a little bit, but uh, it's, a, it's, it's eye-opening. We've also got some transactional numbers from the uh, launch of Maryland's online sports betting over the Thanksgiving holiday, yeah, off to a, by GeoComply. Yep, off to a flying start. Yep. Uh, deal segment, we've got uh, deals involving points bet as well as genius sports. Over in the industry update segment, we are going to be talking about, well, a couple of horse racing announcements. Yeah. yeah. Um, as well as uh, the uh, Gaming and Alcohol Commission of Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario releasing some numbers regarding the regulated versus gray market. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to round up with the legislative side of everything. We've got some news out of Massachusetts, Ohio, and even an administrative decision out of New Jersey that affected one sports book. You know, I, I guess we're getting closer and closer to Massachusetts because we're getting news stories every week <laughs> in Massachusetts. They're having so. multiple meetings. Yeah, lots week, and so. lots of meetings. So it's getting closer in Massachusetts to well, happening. If they want to launch when they want to launch, they got to yeah, have more yeah. and more of these things settled. So, yep. uh, But let's start off with our numbers segment. The American Gaming Association released a report on illegal gambling in the United States and how it, uh, the implied effect has, that it's having on the gaming industry and sports betting industry in this country. The numbers are shocking. Absolutely shocking. I read this and it was, oh my God. Well, according to the American Gaming Association, America's Americans gamble an estimated $511 billion on illegal and unregulated sports books, iGaming sites, and even what they what uh, games that fall under skill games. You know, it's shocking to me that, you know, we have legal sports betting, we have legal casinos and legal online casinos in this country, but people still are going with the illegal sites or illegal the unregulated, bookies, the unregulated. unregulated. I mean, yeah. the offshore sites and things like that. I mean, it's you know, in, in a world where you got to be careful where you put your money online, I, I mean, I, I would never take the chance of going with an un, unregulated site. It's just it's just too risky. Well, the numbers in two areas are kind of uh, interesting to me mm -hmm. in terms of the sports betting side. According to the American Gaming Association, they say the illegal sports book operators take up about 40% of the market right now. That's how what the... Sports betting. Legal? Uh, illegal. 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 Take up about 40%. Uh, 
they estimate, uh, this report estimates anyway, the that Americans wager $63.8 billion on unregulated uh, sites for sports betting. Okay. Yeah, I, that, that's shocking to me. I well, mean, are these in the states? I, I, I guess the next question I would want to know is where are these bettors who are putting their money into unregulated sites? Where are they living and where are they originating from? Are they from states that don't allow sports betting? Or, or I mean, it, the, it, it'd be shocking to me if someone was in a legal in a state where you can legally place a sports bet online at a regulated site and if someone does it illegally in an unregulated site that that would be shocking to me and i'd, I'd want to know the reason why well, you have to that remember would happen. A, a lot of states don't have sports betting yet well that's what i mean where are these yeah. bettors that are placing their money with these unregulated sites the numbers are just incredible if you look at our industry right now the regulated u.s industry the current handle and this is after Nevada released their October report this past week. Mm -hmm. uh, the handle passed $70.4 billion. That's the regulated industry. That's the handle, mm -hmm. national. Revenue was about $5.5 billion, and taxes were $1.126 billion, mm -hmm. give or take a few million. Yeah. Uh, according to this, hand, this report, if these numbers from the unregulated sites were, were factored into this, we're probably looking at about a hundred billion dollar industry for the United States. You know, seventy billion plus sixty billion. Mm -hmm. You have almost four billion in revenue missing. Yeah. So you're looking at possibly getting close to ten billion in revenue. Certainly, it, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm extrapolating, and that's not the proper way to well, do. Well, well, certainly, it hurts the revenue of the legal regulated gaming industry of this country, but it also hurts the states itself because you're the denying you're denying the uh, states uh, the tax revenue. And the so, report said that there was an estimated seven hundred million dollars in taxes that goes to the unregulated industry. That's missing out because of the unregulated industry. See, uh, it, it's well. First off, you know the numbers are staggering. It's, yes. it's amazing. And it, but but just as a consumer, I me personally, I would never put my money in an unregulated site because yeah. the tough part is trying to get your money out. If there's a dispute. <laughs> if, if there's, there's a, a dispute, dispute. How are you going to get yeah. your money out of an unregulated offshore account? You ever try that? It, it's it's almost impossible. It's crazy. I, wh why? If, if you have access to a regulated yep. online site, use it. It's so safe and secure. If you have access. That's the key phrase. And you're protected by regulation of the state and this country. The other aspect of the report yeah, there's my commercial for yeah. regulated sites. The, the sports betting, the sports betting industry recognizes the the regulated versus unregulated issue, but I think the United States has to pay attention more to the online casino side of everything. Yeah, yeah. The report brought out the fact that there was about three hundred thirty-seven billion dollars wagered on unregulated casino sites online. Interesting, yeah. And since we only have about six states that have online casinos operating right now. This is a number that can't be ignored, and yeah, this may so. actually spur on maybe some more legislation, maybe some more enacting, maybe more go live of the online casino industry in the United States because $337 billion, that's a huge chunk. Yeah, yeah. That makes that number from the sports betting side look very, very tiny. Well, I mean, we're kind of spoiled because we're from New Jersey, and, you know, every five seconds there's a commercial about an online casino yeah. on our tv so you know it, it's one of those things we you know it's always there for us we we almost yeah. take it for granted i want to play some slots hey fine i'll i can jump on my computer right now and while i'm talking to you i'll be playing slots i can I'm put sure it on auto and i can I'm, play I'm, some I'm, slots i'm actually sure you're playing yeah right i'm now, probably so. right now yeah so uh but you know i i wonder if these numbers Will you know, like like you said, kind of spur on or motivate some states to, to allow some online casinos? It has to. I mean, look at the tax revenue that oh, the, sure, the report sure. said that Absolutely. was left out because of the on, unregulated online casinos. Mm -hmm. They're saying almost four billion dollars in tax revenue is missing because yeah. of these unregulated well, online look, casino sites. Like I said before, I, I'd be curious where these betters are located who are using the unregulated and offshore sites because I I wonder if they're in states that 
don't allow sports betting or don't allow casinos or don't allow online casinos, I wonder if that will motivate the states to get on board with sports betting or online sports betting or online casinos. Because, look, the whole argument about sports betting is, uh, gee, you know, you pass legislation and people can start sports betting. Hey, you know what? They're already sports betting. You know, you're not preventing people from sports betting because it's it's you, you don't have it legal. You're making it legal. You're regulating it. You're protecting the consumer, and you're also getting tax revenue for the state. Much needed yeah. tax revenue for Be- the state. Besides the consumer protection, it just shifts the where the revenue. If goes. you want to protect yeah. your citizens in any way in gambling, you and your state, you regulate it. Yeah. You allow it, and you regulate it, and you make sure your 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 citizens are protected. You make sure your businesses are protected, and you make sure you get tax revenue from this thing. So it's all, it's, it, it makes no sense to me because, you know, people say, oh, we want allow gambling. Well, people are gambling already. Well, the, the other issue I think some people may be encountering is uh, not everyone has a bank account that they can tie into a uh, an online casino or an online sports book, which may spur the unregulated site well, issues. Yeah. It, it, there's a whole plethora of issues regarding regulated versus unregulated in the United States. And again, you got to find out where all this is and yeah. just continue it, regulating. It, it's an inter- interesting report. Yeah. Always. A, American Gaming Association always has Their interesting reports. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so every time I read a report from them, I'm like, uh, I'm staggered by it. It's just the numbers are incredible and the uh, things they find out about this gaming industry is just absolutely amazing. Uh, let's move on to some happier news, if you okay. want to call it that. Uh, Maryland launched their online sports betting yeah. industry just before Thanksgiving. I think it was on the 23rd. 23rd. Which was the day before Thanksgiving. What it was it? Seven operators? Seven operators live? launched at 9 o'clock on the 23rd. And according to Geo, Geo Comply, which tracks the tra- the online transaction data, you know, the I had volume. A, I got a baseball hat. I got two baseball hats from Geo Comply. I, I, if we, I knew you were doing a story, I would have worn my baseball hat. So. Well, according to Geo Comply, there were 16.5 million geolocation transactions over the Thanksgiving weekend. So over that, between Wednesday and, and Sunday, Sunday of the 16 Thanksgiving and a half weekend. Million. On, th- on Thanksgiving Day alone, 3.7 million mm-hmm. geolocation transactions. Um, seven operators, overall 16.5 million. Thanksgiving Day was three and 3.7 million. The unique account number is high. Very high, as a matter of fact. It's, well, it shows a lot of promise for this market. Well, you know, when it's, it's launch day, yep. so I guess unique would 400, be high. 477,365 unique accounts. Wow. Uh, if you want to compare it to other states, and they did the comparison, um, the launch for Maryland was double Virginia's. Okay. Uh, and four times of Colorado. Wow. So Wow, that's uh, impressive. Yep. So that that was that's kind of interesting. The, I mean, one, it's a, the population density is much yeah, greater. Some some big cities yeah. in uh, Maryland, but um, no, I I I'm always curious when a state launches, and GeoComply does yeah. the report. I always want to see when GeoComply does the report of people out of the jurisdiction yeah. trying to place bet inside the jurisdiction. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I have you seen those numbers yet? I saw the animated map that GeoComply put out. Oh, they have a map, huh? Yeah, and you oh, could nice. see all the different pinpoints popping up. I saw a couple red. Okay. I couldn't tell where they were actually located. All right. But um, the other thing GeoComply pointed out was Maryland's launch rivals or came close to New Jersey for that weekend. Oh, okay. New Jersey had $17.1 million, a million transactions uh, over the uh That is pretty holiday. close. Would Maryland have 16 point 16 something? 16 and right? a half. 16 and a half? Okay. Wow. So already Maryland is making waves there. I yeah. wonder how quickly Maryland's going to shoot into at least, I know they're going to be top 10. I, I think they'll be top 10. I wonder yeah. how quickly they're going to be in the top five. I See, I don't see them in the top five. I think... Well, I, with seven right now, but they're expecting yeah. over... They're, they're, the law allows for like 60. Yeah. So yeah. I don't think they're going to get all that, but I think well, once the market I think, hits maturity, I, I think, think you may see a top five market. I think we have a market that's opening up very soon that may be in the top five. I think uh, Ohio, Ohio could... Ohio may be right uh, there Ohio, right off the bat. I, I think it's going to be for a while neck and neck with Ohio and Pennsylvania for that number five I think, spot. I think you may see. Mark my words. We'll, well, we'll I, track it. I, I, think, I think they'll you may uh, do see, that. I think you may see Ohio even come, you know, start rivaling sometimes in certain months, Nevada. 
Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it'll be interesting. Speaking of Nevada, let's head on over to their numbers as well. Okay. Uh, Nevada made some news in terms of overall gaming revenue. They hit their 20th consecutive month of surpassing $1 billion in gaming revenue. Wow. Uh, the sports betting uh, handle uh, was actually down mm -hmm. The uh, in terms of year over year. Okay. Uh, for revenue, they were up 17% year over year in term, for October. Okay. Uh, seven, uh, fifty nine point fifty six point nine million dollars in revenue. They had a they had a, almost like a two point differential in hold percentage between okay. this year and last year October. Hmm. Interesting. So. Uh, mobile wagering. I'm, I've been following this one because I always find it interesting. Nevada's mobile numbers. Right now, for the month of October, mobile mobile accounted for sixty six point six percent of the total handle. Okay. So two thirds is now mobile mm -hmm. in Nevada. Yeah. So they still have the in-person registration requirement. Well, th their their whole philosophy is get people in the doors yes. of the physical places. That yes. that's what they're talking about. They don't like that. Uh, I, it's it's almost weird. They almost see mobile as competition, even though they're right. part of it. But it, they they want it people in the doors. So you know. Yeah, and that's the other reason I was shocked to find that ne that Nevada doesn't even have a lottery, yeah, because they view that as competition. So um, you know, it's all about getting people uh, in the location on the property. I wonder if at some point they were going to do a lottery. I don't know. And I, well, they have a. I'd, I'd, I'd let's take baby steps. I want them to do stop that. You know, in person, in person registration. <laughs> registration thing. That's really crazy. Well, that's a tourism thing more than anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And speaking of tourism, one quick note before we move on to the next segment: uh, hotel occupancy for for uh, uh, Las Vegas. Yeah. Uh, highest level since November of 2019. 87 percent higher. Uh, reached 87 percent uh, occupancy rate in October. Great, you know, which is great to see. Like I said. Their whole philosophy, get them in, yep. get them in the door, get them, do whatever you need to do, get them in the door. Well, so. Let's head on over to our deal segment. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can go to everybody. Oh, oh, oh. Game starts at 20, best slip is empty. I got to call KG. KG, what I up? I got nothing for you, Fox. Ah, come on. What you got, huh? It is spa day, Jamie. You don't interrupt spa day. Ah, okay. Gracie, what's up? I need some tips. Jamie, you want a tip? Yeah. No. Oh, come on, somebody. Jalen, what's up, man? You want a tip? Yeah. You really want a tip? I really need some tips. Don't call somebody on live TV, Jamie Foxx. Well, you like answer. Saying, have other friends anyway. Marshawn, Barry, holla. Jamie Foxx. Hey, what's up with it, Foxx? Listen, I need some tips. I like L.A. L.A.? No, 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 no. Dallas. No, Dallas. No, no, no. Dallas? Dallas? Not the Dallas? Gotta get Hold on. Miami. How about Detroit? Nah, no, Barry over there. You know, I'm going to call y'all right now. Vanessa, mm. I need your help. I got a tip for you. Always go with your gut. Mmm, I like that. Going with my gut. Let's go with our gut! couple deals to talk about. We have PointsBet in the news again. They have extended their existing partnership with NBC Sports Philadelphia and NBC Sports Philadelphia Plus. Okay. Can't talk about a cable channel or a sports network. Yeah, now everyone has a, a plus. plus. Yeah, I, I, I watch that channel all the time and and PointsBet is... The plus is, or the regular? It, the, the regular. The regular. The regular one, I guess. Is that yeah. was called regular one? The main one? I don't NBC know. NBC Sports The non-plus one. Yeah, yeah NBC, but... NBC Sports Philly. Points bet yeah. is all over that one. Yeah. Well, they have that great partnership, and also they do NBC Sports Edge, too, mm -hmm. with points bet. Um, but I like at half times of uh, uh, games in Philadelphia, uh, when you're watching them on TV, they do the live in-play things, too. They, they do the lines all the way through. It's well, great. Well, that, that, that's 
part of the deal with PointsBet. That's that's great. Uh, but what this deal is, it's an expansion or extension, whatever you want to call it. They're going to be doing four more betcasts. Oh, good. With NBC Sports Philly, NBC Sports Philly Plus. I love the betcasts bet are on NBC uh, Sports Philly Plus. Yeah, it's almost like an overlay mm-hmm. of the actual broadcast. I, I love BetCast. I just love all that information coming to me all at once. I'm like laying there on my the, recliner, and all the numbers are coming at me. It's great. I'm sitting there I, I with ha- my I, phone. It's I have great. to admit, sometimes they're overwhelming <laughs> um, because I'm sitting there watching the game. You know, sometimes I just want to watch the game, which is where the regular broadcast comes in. But if you actually like the announcers they set up for the bro- the BetCasts, that's actually kind of interesting. Let me, want- let me tell you something. The way the Sixers and the way the Flyers have been playing, anything that distracts me from how they're poorly actually- they're doing is fine, is fine with me. Well, if I can make some money off the dreck I'm seeing lately from uh, the Philadelphia winter teams except the Eagles, you know, I'm, I'm very happy with it. Well, they set up a schedule of four more games. Okay, good. Uh, by the time this airs, the first one has already been – Played and aired okay. uh, was with the Memphis Grizzlies. That was on December second. Okay, uh, they've got three other games: Detroit Pistons, all right, uh, Orlando Magic, and Indiana Pacers. Okay, I don't know if these are four new teams because I can't remember them playing the Pistons, the Magic, or the Pacers on the Betcast. I remember seeing some about the Grizzlies doing. That, I don't know, but the Grizzlies may have their own. I I have to. I I think you're, you're going to go back and look at. You're it. also making me think of where I can see this Betcast. Like I said, I only on, on my basic cable. I only have the main. Yes. Uh, Philadelphia channel, but um, I wonder if I can go on the app or something like that. Uh, again, that's the pay side of it. Right? Oh, okay. You know, I, I don't know what the All subscription. Right. I, I think they give you a free trial or whatever. All right, so, okay. Yeah, you know, I'm very curious to see. Exactly. If I win money because of the BetCast and the information that gives me from the BetCast, yeah. it's almost worth it. Well, exactly. It Let's pays see. for itself. Yeah, but uh, I, I'm I'm just wondering how long before someone tries what Fubo failed at. You What's know, that? the watch and bet. Oh, well. Yeah, I know. I know it's Genius, Genius Sports has that stream for watch and bet. It's the low latency streams that they just did the deals for last year, mm-hmm. last week. Yeah. But uh, I'm wondering if NBC at some point is going to try, or even Points Bet is going to try something like that, where instead of doing, you go to the Points Bet app and you do the lightning bet, you know, that sort of uh, setup or the in game. Sure. I wonder when somebody's going to take a shot at it and doing something that actually really works. Let me tell you something. That's the wave of the future. I mean, we had on the CEO of Simple Bet. Who, That's in play, yeah. Yeah. So that, I mean, I think that is the way of the future. I mean, it. when you talk about fan engagement, you can't. Oh, yeah. say more about fan engagement than actually betting during the game as the game is being played because you're constantly watching you're using the betcast for the information and using it to bet so you know that's it's great i think that's the way of the future and uh, i think with regards to these betcasts they're introducing more options good or yeah. more uh betting uh, wagering uh, markets good they mentioned they're going to have live odds which i think they already had uh-huh. future odds as well good player props Good. And uh, again, they're going to have enhanced graphics. Mm-hmm. So I'm very curious to see if they're going to start doing the speed of the passes, the uh, angle of the shots, all the all the data you see, like for the football side of things, yeah. are they going to do this for the basketball side? Now, they're not doing the crazy stuff with the people. I, I, I saw one back cast a couple years ago, I guess it was, and uh, I, I forgot who it was. Uh they were eating pizza, <laughs> watching the game, and they were sitting around a couch. That was distracting. More yeah, so I, I forgot who was it. Was it what was her name? Katie something or other? Was it Katie Nolan? Or? Yeah, I think Katie Nolan was involved in it. Yeah. It was just one of those things where I don't know if you call it a bet cast, but there were people watching it. Like I think they had pizza in front of them, and they were sitting on a couch and watching the game with you. So, well, I, again, I'm I'm very curious to see who they pick for announcers for okay. these four. So, uh, sure. They're going to have different alternate announcers, not different, oh. alternate announcers okay. for the BetCast. Good. Mm-hmm. Each one's going to have a different one. Great. Okay. So uh, that's going to be fun to say. Uh, the other deal was, as I mentioned, Genius Sports just a little while ago, Genius Sports did a deal with Superbet. Oh, okay. They're going to be doing a whole suite of free-to-play games designed to attract new players. Customer retention more so than customer acquisition. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's another expansion of their deal. Okay. Uh, one other note, uh, Better Edge. We've had them on the show in the past. Yes. Yes. Uh, they announced a charity deal. Okay, good. Um, with a company called Give16. Great. What they're doing is 
you know, better edge allows you to bet against somebody else waving, you know, they, they don't have any fees mm. to do the betting. Okay. You're going to be given the option to the potential fee of whatever that transaction was mm -hmm. to donate that to charity. Oh, that's cool. I like that. So that's, I, a, that's really cool to see. That's a nice way. Oh, Congratulations hope, to those guys. Yeah, good for them. I hope uh, other uh, operators pick up on that. Uh, let's head on over to some industry updates. Industry update segment today, we're going to start off north of the border in Ontario. Okay. We have the Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario, AGCO, reporting that 46 online casinos and sportsbook operators have moved from the gray market to the regulated market of the province. See, that's great. Uh, 16, 18 operators, I'm sorry, I can't even read my notes here. 18 operators have left the market. Okay. Um, presumably because of the, you know, they were notified to got to do it or get out. Kind okay. Of thing. So, so I, guess, uh, I guess they, they got out. <laughs> they took their ball and went home. Yep. Okay. Well, again, you may see some of them reappear. Sure. You know, sure. with new partners, new licensing, that oh, sort yeah. of thing. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, but right now there's 46 online casino and sports betting operators as part of the regulated Ontario market. See, like what we were talking about before, yeah. the uh, it's regulated, it's safer for the consumer, it's better for, in this case, the province. Everybody. It's better for everyone. Uh, the... Uh, the theme of these next two stories is horse racing. Okay, good. Uh, we have Caesars announcing that its Caesars race book went live in Maryland. Okay. So Maryland's been busy. Good. The last couple yeah. of uh, days here. Yeah. Um, that's uh, that's uh, an interesting race book. That's a Naira Betts platform. Okay. So uh, that's different than what we're going to be talking about here. We're going to be talking about DK Horse. Yes, I heard about this. DraftKings Horse Racing app. All right. Uh, it's a part of a multi-year agreement between DraftKings and Churchill Downs Incorporated, CDI. Mm -hmm. um, the deal includes CDI subsidiary Twin Spires. Yes. Uh, providing the advanced deposit wagering system for DraftKings to do its own branded standalone uh, app or so some so someone DK would have course. to get their own, the, uh, another There's app. no shared wallet. There's okay. no nothing. So it'd so be, uh, okay. At some point, according to the release and the statement from DraftKings, they will be incorporating DK Horse into the DraftKings suite. See, that's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for one-stop shopping. You mentioned Caesars in Maryland. I want to go to my Caesars app. I want to do my online casino. My uh, they, They're a part of WSOP.com. Yep. They own it. Uh, I want to do horse racing there with my one wallet, and I can do everything in the world. Well, what their their so, plans are doing I can is, dream, can I? Right so, now it's a separate app, but they, what they want to do is at some point have the sports book, the casino, the fantasy sports, and the horse racing a shared wallet, shared app. See, that'd be great. So that's, I would, that's I would love something like that. They're going to be launching right away. This may be the quickest launch I've my, seen. My phone looks like a mess with all the separate <laughs> apps on it. Well, at some point, you're going to just see one good. big icon for all good, this stuff. Good, good. Uh, but they're going to be launching uh, ahead of the 149th running of the Kentucky Derby in May. Mm -hmm. That's very quick for incorporating another company's technology yeah. stack into yours. Sure. Um, also, CDI, Churchill Downs, will also be be providing more content for horse racing to DraftKings. Mm -hmm. uh, it's different than the FanDuel deal that CDI did. Okay. The uh, FanDuel became a sponsor and a part, a broadcast partner. Okay. This is just a content deal with a horse racing app. I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to start seeing something similar down the road yeah. but right now. And also, according to estimates, uh, reports have said that the deal was 60-40 in Churchill Downs' favor in terms of profit sharing. Sure. And it's going to be worth about ten to twelve million dollars to DraftKings. Wow! Great so uh, that's going to be kind of interesting to watch. I love these apps coming out. Uh, CDI stack is different than Naira Bets. So if you if you're used to using Twin Spires for horse racing, yeah, you should have no problem working with uh, the DraftKings app. Great. Uh, one other quick note: we have a brand new kiosk that was just announced. Okay. And I'm talking about kiosk technology. Okay. I got to tell you, you know, I, 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 sports betting for years now, I've used the kiosk in one place, and that was Parks Casino. <laughs> well, I'm not a kiosk guy. If I have my phone, I'll, I'll do it on my phone, even if I'm in a sports book or a casino. This so. is not anywhere yet, but okay. SB22, which is a sports book tech platform operator out of Texas. Okay. They announced the K22, All right. which is a, uh, it's a, it's a, I don't want to say, 
you know, does away with the people, but it really it operates. Does away in, with the people. It, it does it operates independently from a person running a cage. Okay, it's a ticket in, ticket out system. It's it's like the toll booths in New Jersey. I mean, everyone's going with Easy Pass now. No one's even behind the uh, screens anymore. Well, it's, that's it's, what it's going to be like. It's, well, it's this is actually still ticket in, ticket out. Okay, you know how you play your slot machines? You get a ticket, you insert the ticket. It puts the cash into the system, the credit, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And then when you cash out, it gives you a ticket back. Okay. That's what this is going to be doing. All right. So if you're uh, if you're operating a property that doesn't have a lot of staff, mm -hmm. this is a godsend. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This will actually save your bottom line in terms of L employees. Like I said, I used the kiosk at Parks Casino. I used it one time in the sports betting area. Mm -hmm. Then I used it one time because they had them all over the place in yep. the gaming floor. Yep. So, you know. But it was a, that's a little different than this. Yeah. No, so, uh, so I'm very curious to so see I, who I, picks this I, up. I'm first. not well versed in kiosk technology, technology so because I, I, I rarely use them. So well, you will get used. It to sounds kiosk. like it sounds like a great Let idea. Let me tell though. you something. You will like get used to kiosk technology because of Ohio. Ohio has a whole license structure set up just for kiosk <laughs> business. <laughs> okay. So that's something to keep an eye on. All right. Uh, let's head on over to our legislative roundup. All right. We're going to start off with Massachusetts here. We've we've had, like we talked about at the beginning of the show, we uh, have been watching Massachusetts have meeting after meeting after meeting after roundtable, whatever, <laughs> what have you, whatever you want to call these things. Uh, they've been having these commission meetings, these roundtables with different operators or potential operators. Um, suffice it to say, one issue that they they had to to deal with in the last meeting before we were taping this was the fact that MGM Springfield <laughs> was late putting their application. They weren't late with the application fee, so. but they were late with the application itself, which was, it was a miscommunication. They thought get the application fee okay. that told it. So, but, uh, right now they, they, they were late. The gaming commission voted five, four to move it forward. There's no competition for the retail five, licenses. What, what they five, zero, oh, five, zero. I yeah. said five, four. What's that? What? Five, like, zero. Yeah, no, There's you, only you five sure. commissioners. I know you, you, you knew they were, yeah. look, I mean, Hey, come on, MGM, get, get your act together. Well, get, be, get it in on time. I think the interesting scenario would have been if this was one of the mobile operators. Because yeah, yeah, there's there's yeah. competition for those. Yeah, there's no competition for the retail license. Uh, there, there was no way in hell that MGM yeah. Springfield was not going to have a sports book. Yeah. So yes, they were going to move it yeah. forward. I, w I wonder if they knew that. They just said they hey, we'll, we'll get it in when we yeah. get it in. Were they going to say no? Well, the but uh, seriously, get it in on time. The, the other uh, discussions that were had, Plain Ridge Park, which mm -hmm. is the uh, Penn National property down yeah. in Plainville, Massachusetts. Uh, they have multiple possible locations for their physical sports book. No decision was made. Okay. Uh, the two tracks, kind of interesting. Uh, Suffolk Downs still is trying to settle on a partner for okay. sports betting. They are also still trying to figure out the real estate situation for their uh, uh, retail facility. Oh, okay. They have not decided on that. Rainham Park, which is the uh, the, the old dog track. Yeah. Uh, they have no partner yet. They're oh. still working on that. Okay. And they have decided that they're going to just demolish the simulcast building. Okay. And build a new structure. Wow. Good uh, for them. 58,000 uh, square foot structure with 30,000 square foot gaming space. Leads me to believe there may be something else coming there in terms of gaming options. Yeah. For yeah. random. See, I, I like that. They're going all in with sports betting. You well, know? They, they, have they're, to. They're, they have they're, to. It's great. That's great. Uh, Ohio, we just passed one last deadline before the January 1st launch, and that was the commission let all the operators know that they had to have their either their retail locations or their online uh, apps all ready for inspection. Okay. Physical inspection for the retail books, testing for the online books. That's the last step now. There's there's no well, other. This is a home stretch. This I mean, it. January 1st, it launches, right? Yep. All and right. Uh, last but not least, we had an administrative decision coming out of New Jersey that I found kind of interesting. This was uh, Caesar Sportsbook was fined five hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, yep. not five hundred thousand, <laughs> five hundred dollars by the New Jersey Division of Gaming Enforcement because of a hockey bet. Okay, this has been going on for over a year with Caesar Sportsbook and this one better. Yeah, he placed an over bet, uh, multiple goals in a hockey game. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it was the Continental Hockey League Russian. Okay, um, he won the bet. 
basically. It was uh, it was a high scoring game. He bet the over and it went to overtime. And the overtime is what caused the issue. Here. Yeah. According to the better, he should have won his twenty seven thousand mm-hmm. dollars. According to Caesar Sportsbook, their initial reaction was since it went to overtime, overtime doesn't count. Okay. So you had to you had to judge your test where the bet was at, at the end of regulation. The better said, No, 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 wait. It didn't indicate that. It didn't indicate on the bet. that wasn't clear. Yeah. So what he did was he followed a complaint with the Division of Gaming Enforcement after repeated attempts to try and get the money. Okay. Uh, the Division of Gaming Enforcement held an administrative hearing, and they sided with the better. Good. Saying, give him the 27000 Good. It wasn't clearly stated that overtime wasn't part of this. If it's not clearly stated, it's going to go against you. So uh, the better won his $27,000, and Caesars got slapped and, with 500 bucks. And it's a lesson learned for all the sports books across yes. the country. Make it clear what the bet entails. Uh, make it clear everywhere. Everywhere. That's it for this week's book report. Uh, please keep the press releases coming in. Info at Turnpike Sports Radio dot com is our email address for the press releases if you've been following along on tv our ticker has been showing additional news stories we did not have a chance to to cover in the time allotted here also if you go to turnpikesports.us and click on the blog button after the show is released you will see a full print version of the book report which also has even more stories that we didn't have a chance to cover either on the ticker or on air today uh, enjoy your week, everybody. And that'll do it for us this week. We'll see you next time on the Turnpike.